Hey everyone, welcome to The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. Today is my cleaning day, but I have promised you guys this video, and so I'm going to kind of juggle doing this recipe, um, and while it's baking, I can get back to cleaning. And then, my tomato plants have been staked. I've got to get out there and tie them up. Hoping I can do that today so I don't have to do it tomorrow, but I'll give you a garden update as well. Well, wait a minute. I've probably already given you a garden update. So anyway, I got to state the tomatoes. So we'll scratch that on this video. But anyway, if you're new here, my name's Leslie. I am so glad you're here. I normally upload content on cooking, but occasional farming, grocery hauls, day in the life of, you name it, you'll get it here. So uh, a little bit of everything. Um, today, I'm making spanakopita. I told you I would make another dish with the phyllo dough and that's what I'm doing. So let's run the intro. If you haven't subscribed, now is a great time to do so. And let me just say to those of you who are back, welcome back, you know how much I love you. So, all right, on to the intro. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open Okay, so I know this sounds a little different. I decided to put on my um, microphone. So I have some asparagus here and I'm gonna just cut that up off camera. I'm gonna cut it up into like inch size. I also have some spinach here. Now spanakopita is usually just spinach. I think the artichoke, I mean, did I say artichoke? Asparagus, I don't know what I said, but it's asparagus. Um, I, I haven't seen that in that uh, before. So this is a different little spin on Spanakopita. It's probably not traditional. Um, but my spinach also, it's baby spinach, but some of the stems look a little bit um, tough. So I'm actually going to tear off the stem and then I'm going to tear this into pieces. And I need two cups of that as well. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'll bring you back as soon as I get it done. Okay guys, I am just chopping away. Um, I did cut off, I wanted to show you, I am taking off about that much at the end. Um, and um, because it can get woodsy, uh, the asparagus, it can get a little tough. And so I am discarding that. Um, if my pig was here, if I had a pig yet, I could feed it to the pig. Um, However, or I could save it for like a soup stock or whatever, but um, I'm just going to toss it today. All right, so I have about two cups of asparagus here. I'm going to get that into steaming and or kind of boiling actually um, and cook it down till it's just um, tender, tender, but still has a little bit of a firmness to it. Um, if that makes any sense at all, but we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so if you hear the lawnmower come around, our grass, Daniel's mowing our yard, so. Um, we're just gonna, I'm gonna butter this dish. You can spray it. Uh, I just can't happen to find my spray right now. And we're gonna butter each layer. If you know anything about phyllo dough, it is super flaky and there's lots of layers and and the reason there's lots of layers is because it's actually, we're actually going to layer it. It is a thin, thin piece of crispy dough and rubbed in butter. And then um, another layer, more butter, another layer, and so on and so forth. So uh, the asparagus is cooking. So we're going to, I'm going to grab the butter out of the microwave 
and we're going to start layering the first 10 layers of the phyllo dough. Uh, we're going to go down with 10, so y'all might have to help me count. And if I miscount, just, um, you know, overlook me. But here, let me show you. See how it is layered? I mean, these are just really thin, thin layers of this phyllo dough. So we're going to work on this. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my butter. I'll meet you back right here. All right. So I'm going to try to turn my pan this way just so you guys can get a better view. And you want to be, this is really delicate, delicate stuff. So be super gentle. And I have to be sure I only have one piece. All right. And I'm just, I don't care if I bunch it up. You can trim it if you need to, but I, I'm fine bunching it up a little bit. But once it touches that butter, it loses any kind of movement. So, all right, so I'm just going to brush this melted butter all over it. And with that being said, once, it, like I said, once it gets touched with something wet or butter, um, just be careful because you lose any control over it. So keep, at least keep one hand fairly clean. See, I mean, it just, you can't do anything with it after you get it, it touches butter or moisture or anything. So, I'm, and if it falls over on itself, that's fine with me too. Um, so there's two. Can't tell if that's two. Yep, that's two right there. All right, so I'm just going to keep layering till I get to 10. Okay, so at this point, if you don't like how thick it's being at this end, you can come in with a knife and you can trim that excess off, which is what I did. And I'm just gonna go around the sides of the dish. I've got to number 10. And this may be easier to do as you go, but I think it's doing it all at one time. For me, I just soon get it over with at one, one wipe instead of a bunch. I think I pretty much got it good on this side. There's not much excess. All right. So there we have our 10 layers. Okay, so now I'm going to sprinkle this spinach on top. All right, let me grab and drain the asparagus. Okay, guys, we have our asparagus and I'm just gonna spoon that over here as well. Now, as you can tell, so far we haven't done, I did salt the water that I cooked the asparagus in. Alright, I did a little extra asparagus, so I'm going to halt there. Okay, so I have also this 8 ounce block of feta. We're going to use about half of it. So I'm just going to eyeball half. Going to drain it just a little bit. Now, here comes a lot of your salt, but I probably will give it a sprinkle of salt and pepper before we're all done. Y'all know how I love me some feta. I have a friend who's going to learn how to make her own feta. She, she's watched somebody do it, and uh, my goodness, if, if it's easy... 
I might figure out how to do it. I know you'd need probably raw milk. I'm, a sh I'm sure. And I'm just crumbling this with my hands. And it is super cold. All right, let me grab a salt and pepper shaker and we're just going to give it a quick um, and I'm actually going to give it a little pressy press. All right, let me grab the salt and pepper shaker. I'll be right back. Okay, so I guess this is just the southern gal in me thinking that everything needs a little salt and pepper, but <laughs> here we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue layering this phyllo dough, buttering, layering, buttering, layering, and so forth. So I'll see you guys back as soon as I get the other 10 layers on, and we'll talk about what it tells me to do next. It That makes me a little bit nervous. So once we come back, we'll talk about it and see what we decide to do. Okay, everybody, I have it completely layered, and I just, the edges, I just kind of took and stuffed down. Now, here's what makes me nervous. It says to go ahead and pre-slice this. So, since it says that, I'm going to do it, but um, I I'm wondering if I should wait till it's done, but we're going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to cut it into 12 slices. So I did it in half that way. And then we're going to cut that half in half. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. And we're going to cut this half in half, give or take a centimeter or two. And now we're going to turn it this way. Oh, it's slanted. <laughs> And we're going to go in thirds this way. So we're going to have 12 pieces of Spanakopita. I'm really wondering why we um, are pre-cutting it. But anyway, I'm going to obey the recipe. Maybe I'll understand when it's done. You know what, it's probably because it's so flaky that if you cut it afterwards, it would just flake apart, so. I'd like to learn how to make my own phyllo dough. That may be a mission. Because it is hard to find, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so this is going in a 350 degree oven. I can't remember how long but I'll let you know as soon as we come back. At this point, my microphone decided to go out on me, but in my little pot here, I have two tablespoons of melted butter for a sauce that I'm not familiar with being served with Spanakopita, but that's what this recipe called for. So to the two tablespoons of butter, I'm adding two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're just going to whisk that until it gets nice and smooth. Um, I've, I've been to several Greek festivals and I've never seen it served with a sauce. I uh, may just be unfamiliar with that, but um, I'm stirring it up here and I'll soon realize that the stove is not even on. <laughs> and I say it works better if the stove is on. Yep, here I've noticed, and now we're cooking. Well, okay, now we're cooking. So I'm just gonna stir this until the flour taste gets um, cooked out of it, and the raw flour taste. You don't want it to really brown or anything. You just wanna cook it a little bit and allow that um, flour taste to come out of it. This recipe also calls for dill weed, which I did not have. 
And you'll see later on in the video that Bryant probably thinks it would have been too, even too tart with the deal. Um, so I'm actually glad um, we left it out. But the recipe does call for deal weed. And I will leave down in the description below the actual recipe. This was a taste of home recipe. I found it in one of their magazines. So um, I will type it up just as they have it written in their magazine. So the sauce is coming together nicely. I believe the flour taste will be cooked out. I'm adding in a cup and a half of half and half cream. That is half and half, not heavy cream. And I'm just gonna stir and whisk that until it thickens a little bit, which it thickened up really nicely and beautifully. Um, it calls for several tablespoons of lemon juice. I didn't have it, so I'm just putting in uh, three capfuls of lime juice. Hang on a second. I'll go back and add one, a little bit more. And this is where the tartness comes from, of course. And um, Bryant thought it was perfect. He would not have added anything else to add any tartness to it. I was checking my recipe just to be sure how much time. It's a half a teaspoon of thyme, and I'm just eyeballing that. And I like to crush my thyme up in my hand. I don't like the big pieces that can get stuck in your teeth <laughs> of thyme. So I'm just doing a little crush in my hand there. Okay, guys. And the only other thing I have left to add is just a little bit of salt. And our sauce is beautiful and ready now. Um, it's actually quite perfect and was really tasty. I was actually shocked at how good it was because, like I said, I wasn't used to a sauce being served with Spanakopita. We have a Greek festival in Winston-Salem. And I said, when things are good, they scream, Opa! And so um, we'll know in a little bit um, if this Spanakopita and sauce is good. And if I can make Bryant say, Opa! <laughs> um, he will come in and do the taste test for me. But I'm just giving it one last whisk and bringing it to just to get it a little bit thicker. Uh, but it will set up as it cools down. It does get thicker on its own. So yeah, I'm sorry my microphone quit working, but I'm so glad I have the option of doing a voiceover. So the sauce is complete. Now we're just waiting for the Spanakopita to come out of the oven. And I'm saying something. <laughs> I'm super um, excited about something there. Oh, I'm telling you about... <laughs> I'm telling you about them saying, Opa! <laughs> Can you read my lips? Okay, guys, the um, Spanakopita is about to come out of the oven. And here it is. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm actually glad we went ahead and pre-cut it. That actually worked out nicely. And there is the sauce. It is absolutely perfection. So, let's get Bryant in here. Okay, everybody. Well, let me just tell you what just happened. My microphone battery died and you got no volume. So, we're going to start this over. <laughs> he's actually already tasted it. Take number two. But um, he's been out working. He's been um, changing, oil. changing oil. He ran some errands. And so now he comes in to try the Spanakopita that he's already tried, but he's going to try it again for you. I'm going to try it again for you. Should I use the same pun I used a while ago? Look at this paleo dough. Explain See, why you're saying... Instead of phyllo dough? Instead of phyllo dough. Because paleo is a Greek word that means love. And he is correct. I am correct. Mmm, that is delicious. No, no, not me. Nope. Mm. Opa! Opa, mama mia! Opa! <laughs> it's Greek, right? Yep. Um, 
I don't know if that is tr a traditional Greek spanakopita, but spanakopita is a Greek dish. I love spinach, and I love asparagus, and this works really good for me. Now, the little drizzle sauce she's got on top has a little tart flavor to yep, it. Yep, the lime juice. Yeah, it's got a little tart flavor. And it would have even been more tart if I'd had the dill weed that was supposed to go in it. I think I think it's plenty. It, it, okay. Less is more with this. Okay. With that. You've got so feta. you could take or leave the sauce. Yeah, it's got feta cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I like the sauce. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it was plenty tart. Plenty tart. This is really good right here. Excellent right here. And ask, let me tell you how I know he's telling the truth. Because off camera he was digging in the ditch. The, the ditch. Not digging in the ditch. He was digging in the dish and eating out of the dish. And he's already eaten like two or three squares. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Spanakopita. I wonder if you could put some, some shredded chicken in there, too. Yeah, you probably could. Mm -hmm. I mean, that may totally take it out of the traditional realm. Or non-traditional. But, um, yeah, I don't see why not. To make it make it an actual entree. Mm -hmm. So, okay, guys, thank you for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I hope you enjoyed this Spanish opera, and I will see you next time on The Farm and Pastor's Wife. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. I told you he liked it. <laughs> no, it's wrong. It's wrong. Bye, y'all.